the title of this particular talk is a convergence of four biblical signs. Everything that you're going to see, I've got biblical backing. Now we get to the second sign, which is the sign of Joel 2 and Matthew 24. Joel 2, we read, I will display wonders in the sky and on the earth, blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. In Matthew 24, verse 29, we read, But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, many people have wondered what these passages mean. And until recently, most people haven't considered that these words of our Lord could have been referring to eclipses of the sun and the moon. However, in 2008, the Lord showed Pastor Mark Biltz that there would be a tetrad of total lunar eclipses in 2014 and 2015. These are also known as blood moon tetrads uh, because of the moon's hue during the eclipse. Tetrads of lunar eclipses occur when four total lunar eclipses happen in a row. But let's look at lunar eclipses in general. NASA's got a wonderful site on eclipses. 5,000 years of lunar eclipses from 19... 99 B.C. to 3000 A.D., and there's another website that's got 6,000 from 3000 B.C. to 3000 A.D. Now, in the 5,000 years, the NASA site, there will have been, or there will be, 12,064 lunar eclipses. And of these, uh, 3,479 will be total eclipses, and 142 of them will occur as tetrads. Now, if God were not very creative, which of course we know that he is, he'd probably do things on the laws of averages. And if you average the 142 into 12,064, well, you'd get a tetrad once every 35 years. It doesn't work that way. So, tetrads of lunar eclipses, well, they do happen with some regularity. However, the eclipses in 2014 and 15 are pretty special. Their dates are April 15, 2014, October 9, 2014, April 4, 2015, and September 28, 2015. Now, these dates really don't look all that special to us. Uh, we are at a disadvantage because we use the Gregorian calendar. Now, the Gregorian calendar is a good calendar. I'm not saying it's not a good calendar, but it doesn't show us dates from God's perspective. And when we put the Hebrew calendar next to the dates on the Gregorian calendar, we get this. Well, now look at that. Even though most people can see a pattern, you know, Nisan 15, Tishri 15, Nisan 15, Tishri 15, you know, the Gregorian calendar dates change, but Nisan 15 is still going to be Nisan 15. Tishri 15 is still going to be Tishri 15. So we see a pattern, but because we are oriented on the Gregorian calendar, not the Hebrew calendar, we don't realize the significance. But here it, we've got before us now Nisan 15. It got Passover and Tabernacles, Passover and Tabernacles. So we've got something going on here. But, because, for many people, we still don't understand what Passover and Tabernacles are, um, that may not still make a whole lot of sense to us. So, still, what's so special about these days? Well, let's go to Exodus 16:16. 16, 16. Three times in a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Booths, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Well, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's Passover. The Feast of Weeks, that's Pentecost. And the Feast of Booths is Tabernacles. The Passover and Pentecost, those had been fulfilled. Jesus' first coming, um, they were fulfilled then. 
And the Feast of Booze, Tabernacles, well, that one is yet to be fulfilled. And presumably, it will happen when Jesus comes the second time around. Big thing that we need to note. What's important to note is that these are the Lord's feasts and not Jewish feasts. Okay? Big thing to note. The Lord's feast and not Jewish feast. Now how do we know that they are the Lord's feast days? Let's go to Exodus 23 verse 14. That gives us the answer. And the Lord through Moses said, Three times a year you shall celebrate a feast to me. That's what he said. Well, now let's look at this. Here are our lunar eclipses. And we've got 2014 and 15, Nisan 15, both years, Tishri 15, both years. Now, we haven't seen the connection because of our orientation to the Gregorian calendar. Now, this really is a pretty amazing fact, but what could it mean and what could its significance be? The question we have to ask, ask ourselves is, have tetrads of lunar eclipses on the Lord's feast days occurred before? And if so, what was going on at the time? Oh, I forgot to tell you, that, that last one on Tishri 15, 2015. And one of the interesting things here is we're actually, we are actually, with this particular slide, we are mixing apples and oranges. Because we have Tishri 15, that's a Hebrew calendar, but we have 2015, well, that's a Gregorian date. The Hebrew date would be 5775, okay? But, you know, we're kind of mixing things together here. But the last one that's going to happen on Tishri 15, which is the Feast of Booths, uh, that particular eclipse will be a super blood moon. In other words, the moon is going to appear 14% larger than the other uh, lunar eclipses, the other three. Now, it's not going to be larger. It's just the way the elliptical movement of the moon moves around to the sun and the earth and so forth. So it'll look larger. But it'll look really large there in Jerusalem on that particular date. Now, tetrads of lunar eclipses on the Lord's feast days uh, in the last 500 years, we have 1493 and 94, 1949 and 50, and 1967 and 68. Okay, I've got to explain this one. Because I've said these are tetrads of lunar eclipses on the Lord's feast days. Uh, one of the things that happened after Mark Biltz published his findings the NASA website went down for a while. Okay, so the NASA website, the government website went down for a while. And then it came up again. Well, one of the things that I did as I was working through preparing this particular uh, presentation is I checked everybody's numbers to see if, in fact, what everybody was saying was true. A good Berean does that. Well, it turns out that here, 1493 and 94, they no longer land on the feast days. These do. This one doesn't. And there are actually four more preceding the 1493 and 94. Um, and those aren't on the feast days either. So it's like, hmm. I have, in fact, written Mark Bills to say, have you looked at the site, the website lately? Because I believe that what he saw was true. Because I don't believe that he would have put it down in print um, if he hadn't seen the pattern. But it's no longer visible on the website. The only, the, well, not the only, but a possibility. A possibility is that uh, the enemy doesn't want us to get the connection. And so somebody fudged with the numbers so that you can't make that connection anymore. So, so from 1493 and 94, you know, back to the year 162 AD, which are the numbers that 
you know, we've got these tetrads for, uh, they don't match anymore. Okay? The significance of these, however, is this. Look, in 1493 and 94, the Jews were being and had been expelled from Spain. Okay? They'd been expelled from Spain. Now, they were expelled in 1492, but, you know, here's the aftermath. 1494 and 50, the Jews had become a nation, but they had already had to uh, fight for their very existence. And then in 67 and 68, that was a six-day war when Jerusalem was regained as Israel's capital. What we learn from the ancients is this. Lunar eclipses were seen as a sign, even an omen, for Israel. So if you consider uh, the lunar eclipses as an omen for Israel, you look at what was happening during those dates and you go, well, yeah, they were significant for them. Now, tetrad of lunar eclipses on the Lord's feast days. 2014-15, which is what we're living through now. Already there has been war. You know, Israel has had to fight Hamas because of the elaborate tunnel system that Hamas had built into Israel from Gaza. Will there be more? We're just going to have to wait and see. But, you know, we, we look back, then we can look forward, and it's really interesting. You know, we're trying to connect the dots here. The uniqueness of the tetrads uh, we had in 49 and 50, 67 and 68, and 2014 and 15 is this. There will not be another tetrad of lunar eclipses on the Lord's feast days during the rest of this millennium. There will not be another tetrad of eclipses on the Lord's feast days during the rest of this millennium. So much for the law of averages. <laughs> It doesn't fit. What's interesting is that there have been three tetrads in a 66-year period. And then after this one, there aren't any for the rest of a 1,000 years. That tells you something about the uniqueness of the days in which we are living. Now, let me show you a really cool, a really cool slide. This one here. You know, some people just have a lot of time on their hands, I think, when they come up with this. You see the, right here we have the tetrads that, you know, we are about to do this one. So this is 2015. This is 2014. Um, what someone recognized when they were looking at the NASA site is that there was a triad of eclipses before the tetrad. There were some other, you know, partial eclipses in between there. Um, but they looked at this and saw there's a, tetra, there's a triad of eclipses here. And then they looked down and found there's a triad of eclipses after the tetrad. Okay? And then, and this has to be the Lord doing this. Okay, absolutely. So what they did is they drew a midpoint line down the middle. Well, actually, if you could fold this slide in half, they would be mirror images. Absolutely mirror images. Because if you can see here, the first one that happened in December, 20, December 21st, 2010, was uh, 1,477 days from the midpoint. The midpoint is January 5th of this year. The last one will be, that's going to be... Uh, January 21st of 2019, that one, another 1,477 days from the midpoint. Same thing with the two on the, these next two, or the, the third ones here. Okay? It's perfect. And guess what? No other tetrad in history since 3000 BC has ever displayed this kind of symmetry. I think that's amazing. And I did go looking at a lot of the tetrads. Again, I was being a Berean. I looked at lots of tetrads. I was figuring this out. And uh, the tetrads, 67, 68, you know, 49, 50, 
They don't do this. None of the tetrads do this. So the, uh, the tetrads we're looking at are the Lord's feast days, and you got triads on either side of these, and it's a perfect mirror image. It's pretty amazing. I'm like going, wow. That's stunning, I think. So, uh, through the present extremely unique lunar tetrad, the Lord may be trying to get Israel's attention, giving them a heads up, a warning, letting them know that shakings may be coming in or around this tetrad and to be prepared for them. Now, let's go back to Joel 2 and Matthew 24. Joel 2. I will display wonders in the sky and on the earth, blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. Matthew 24. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Look at this. Everything matters in the scriptures. The sun is actually mentioned before the moon in both of these passages. Okay? There are no idle words in scripture. Uh, I think order is extremely important. We miss some of these details because we just read and we don't read to grasp these things. But the sun is actually mentioned before the moon in these two passages. Will there be eclipses of the sun anytime soon? Well, as a matter of fact, there are. And according to the ancients, again, we go back to the ancients, eclipses of the sun were said to be a sign or an omen for the nations of the earth. Now, why would the sun be an omen for the nations and the moon an omen for Israel? Well, the moon is smaller than the sun. Israel is smaller than all the nations. That's why. So, here you've got solar eclipses in 2015. In just a few days, less than two weeks, we have a total solar eclipse on March 20th of this year. And then later on, we will have a partial solar eclipse on September 13th, 2015. Now, let's look at it this way. The solar eclipse is March, of, March 20th of this year. Well, guess what? It just happens to be the first day of the Jewish sacred year. Okay? The Jews have two calendars. They have a civil calendar and a sacred calendar. And so uh, the, the total solar eclipse on March 20th of this year of 2015, it's the first day of the Jewish sacred year. Now we got the partial eclipse on September 13th of this year, 2015. Well, it's the last day of the Jewish civil year. So we've got the first day of the sacred year and the last day of the civil year. So what could God be saying to the nations through these solar eclipses? I believe he could be saying this. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I rule over the nations of the earth. The sacred and the civil realms belong to me. I believe that's what he's saying. So, that's our second sign. Uh, we have an interesting and rare convergence of eclipses. Uh, we have a tetrad of lunar eclipses on the Lord's feast days, of uh, Passover and tabernacles, and solar eclipses on the first and last days of the Jewish sacred and civil calendars. Both of these could be evidence that at this specific time, the Lord is trying to get the attention of Israel and the nations. 